Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over an example for the arithmetic sequence at the IB Math Studies level. So, first things first, right off the bat, the formula booklet gives us two formulas. The first one to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, and the second one to find the sum of n terms in an arithmetic sequence, which can actually be done in two ways. So, the problem gives us that the fifth term u5 is greater than u1, and this immediately implies that d, when you're playing your sequence with, that each time you change from one term to the next, has to be greater than zero. Because if the term farther away is greater than the first one, then you have to be adding something. So d has to be greater than zero. You can't be subtracting um, in this example. And so they also give us that u5 minus u1 is 36. So part a asks us to find the common difference, d. And so with all sequences, I feel like it's always good to have a diagram. So here I write down u1, u2, u3, u4, u5. And trying to use this piece of information right here, I ask myself, from u5 to u1, how many times do I apply d? So here it's once, twice, three times, and four times. So I can say that u5 minus 4d equals u1. Um, if I change these numbers around a little bit and leave u5 minus u1 equals 4d, right? By doing minus u1 on both sides and plus 4d on both sides, I can use what I got earlier. So here I have 36 equals 4d. If I divide both sides by 4, I end up with d being equal to 9. So d equals 9. So part b, part 1, first of all they tell us that the 10th term of the sequence is double the 7th term. And they ask us to write down this information using only u1 and d. So conveniently, in the first form formula, it is composed of u1 and d. And well, n, but we have the value of n. And so if we plug in u10 for this formula here, the first one, we end up with u1 plus 10 minus 1 times d, right? This simplifies to u1 plus 9d. If we do the same for u7, I'm going to do it a little bit faster this time, we end up with u1 plus 6d, right? So using both of these, so we get in to the information that they gave us, we end up with the following. U1 plus 9D equals 2 times U7, right? Which would be U1 plus 6D. And this in the formula booklet, I mean, sorry, in the, um, in the mark scheme is good enough. You can distribute the 2 or whatever, but this is good enough. B part 2 tells us to find u1. So conveniently, we can use what we got from B part 1 to get B part 2. So if I plug in for D here, I end up with u1 plus 9 times 9 equals 2 times u1 plus 12 times 9. I, here I distributed the 2 over, so that's why it's 2u1 and 2 times 6 gives us 12. And so working this around a little bit, u1 plus 81 equals 2u1 plus, plus 108. Uh, we do minus u1 to both sides. So we end up with 81 equals u1 plus 108. We subtract 108 on both sides in order to leave u1 alone. And from this, we end up that u1 necessarily has to be negative 27. So, b part 2 gave, gave us that u1 is equal to negative 27. Um, my advice for all sequences problems is that you should always try to do like the diagram that I did in the beginning. Because it helps visualize a lot. Um, 
just the sequence. And like very classic mistake is saying like, okay, from U5 to U1, I have to apply D five times, right? But no, if you put the diagram, you're gonna make sure that it's always gonna be one less than that, okay? In this case, as I showed before, it was gonna be 4D. But yeah, that's just like a classic example and I feel like if you use a diagram, it's much easier to avoid. Also, you always wanna use the piece of information that they give you. Without using that U10 is equal to two times U7, there was no way we're gonna do B part one. And so sometimes you can get lost, like thinking of only the first piece of information that they gave us and the first formulas, but really, if there's new piece of information, at least in at least in IB, like they're not gonna try to trick you with it most of the time. So always find a way to use that information. I hope it helps.